I've stayed for two nights in Luxembourg City and it really is a lovely place to spend a little time. Although, as you'd expect, it has the feeling of being a very wealthy city. The topography of this UNESCO World Heritage Site is dominated by the deep gash created by the gorge of the River Petrus, which incidentally was a lovely place to escape the hustle and bustle. And it seems no European city is complete without a poignant reminder of those who were lost in two world wars. Although this one also remembers Luxembourgers who died fighting fascism in Spain in the 1930s. The west of the city is protected by the valley of the Alzette. And from the base of the valley there's now a funky lift to return you to the upper city. Which I must confess, I did ride twice. From up here you can clearly see what will be today's route out of Luxembourg as the train crosses the two major viaducts. Anyway, there's a bloke waiting for us at the station in the rain. And good morning from the end of the platform at Luxembourg on a slightly damp Saturday morning. It's been a nice time. I've had a nice stay in Luxembourg and had a very good walk around the city compared to uh, Obviously, all the other European capitals, Luxembourg is quite the, quite the tiddler. And uh, so, yes, it, you end up with a, a very manageable station where you can just wander around and uh, take in the sights. But just loving these here, look. Two locomotive roundhouses, absolute gems. And uh, I'm pleased they're preserving them. Certainly the one here to my right seems to be uh, back in business and the other one looking a bit tatty, but uh, still, uh, still being used for business of various kinds. So uh, yeah, I think they're probably listed. I shall go and look that up. There might be some writing down here about them. So this morning I am leaving uh, Luxembourg and heading north to Liège in Belgium. And this particular route wiggles up through the actual country of Luxembourg itself. And uh, on the European rail map, it's coloured green. So it should be quite scenic. So today will be the usual Johnny Hoover fair of interesting station and architecture, followed by hopefully scenic ride, and I hope we'll be able to see some of it. It's a bit grey and rainy here in Europe, so uh, it's definitely a case of seeing how this one goes. Well, let's wheel back to outside Luxembourg station, which has featured briefly in the last couple of videos, but now gets a starring role. This station was constructed between 1907 and 1913, in what I understand is called the Moselle Baroque Revival style. The entrance hall has been beautifully renovated. I do love both the stained glass and the ceiling mural. And as you'd expect, there's ticket offices, waiting rooms and eateries here too. And to the south is the Hall des Voyages, which was added in 2012, providing a covered exit onto the bus and tram stops. But we've time to go out and do some train spotting. And as you can see, there are some ticket machines, but if you're local, there's never any need to bother with them. That's because since 2020, all public transport within the boundaries of the state is completely free, which includes trains, trams and buses. Although, if you fancy travelling first class on the trains, then you can pay 10 euros and that will allow you to do so for the whole day. Now, these are the kind of prices that get a travel YouTuber's pulse racing, so I'm definitely going to plan to return and show you all quite a lot more of this beautiful little country. And a feature of the local rail services are these double-deck push-pull sets, powered by Class 3000 or 4000 locos. But I really fancy a ride on these much older Class 2000 EMUs. Right, now it's time to get over to Track 3 to catch our train. So, whilst I cross over, let's have a look at the route. After one quick stop in Luxembourg, we'll head north down the River Alzette, wiggling through the Luxembourg countryside with lots of stops on the way. At Etelbrecht, the line climbs alongside the River Zawar. And then it picks up smaller and smaller tributaries until it tops out on the border at Trois 
And once into Belgium, the plan is reversed as we wiggle down the riversides through beautiful Belgian valleys until we enter the iconic liege Guimont station. And seeing how tortuous the line is, it means it's no surprise that the 160 kilometres, or 99 miles, will take us 2 hours and 39 minutes, which ain't fast. But this ride is not about fast, for sure. Right, let's hop on board this SNCB Class 08 electrical multiple unit for this voyage through what is probably rather damp countryside. There's a small first class section at the back here, although it's very hard to tell it's actually first class. Legroom is okay and we do get a tray table which is big enough. But the seats themselves are hardly of the quality you'd expect on a service that has a running time of around three hours. And whilst there's ample overhead luggage space, I really do think that a modern train should not just have those weirdly placed power supplies over the banks of four seats. And we're off through the exit tunnels and then we should pop out with a good view of Luxembourg. Yep, what a classic view of the city we are getting. And further along we get to see the big lift from this side. At Pfaffenthal Kirchberg you can change for a funicular that drops you down to the trams which then run through the business and political districts out to Lux Expo. And at least we have the blessing that the train won't stop at every station on the line. And soon we're travelling down the broad valley of the Alzette and we've left the big city behind. What we're riding now is known as Line 10. Line 10 from Luxembourg to Etelbrick was opened in 1862 and then in 1866 it extended to trois Vierges, and it made it across the border to Gouvy a year later in 1867. Mersch has a pretty neat train bus interchange and I noticed that all those black and white buses are electric. And just beyond the town is Pettingen Castle. Well, this is a lovely section of the line, and if you thought Luxembourg was just all about a big city and bigger banking, then hopefully this will broaden your view. Ettelbrick has always been a busy town as it's at the confluence of three rivers. And the station is also the junction where the branch to De Kirsch will turn off to the right. Now things should get even more rural as we head up the valley of the Zauer. And as the valley narrows we will cross and recross the river many times. I'm not quite sure of the pronunciation, but Goebbelsmill really feels like it's in the middle of nowhere, tucked in as it is by the riverbank. And it's also here that we leave the Zauer and pick up the river vaults. This really reminds me of some of the sections of line in Slovakia that I travelled on last winter. Ah, there's one of those cute Class 2000 EMUs at Kautenbach. And that's because the station is the terminus of the branch line that goes off to the northwest to Volts. And it's here we say goodbye to the Volts, and beyond the tunnel we pick up the Clef.
As we climb, the little towns seem to get prettier and prettier, and this really does begin to look like a lovely place to get out and have a walk. Although maybe not on a wet day like today. And we cross the river one more time to enter the station at Cleuf, or Clairvaux in French. All along here is where the Battle of the Bulge took place in 1944, and Clairvaux was the site of very heavy fighting in December 1944. And here, where we cross the river opposite the school, it changes its name to the Vaults. And finally we climb to what I think is the highest station on the line at trois And we are held here for a while as the section of line across the border is single track. So let's look at a bit more of the train. As you can see there's really hardly any passengers crossing the border with me. Well second class looks almost like first. I don't think there's much less legroom although they are not blessed with a tray table. And to be fair there's not a whole lot of difference in the seating either. And I'm not quite sure, but somewhere along here we reach a height of 500 metres above sea level and we also cross the border into Belgium. And as we pull into Gouvy, there's the customary at-border marshalling yards. And also we get sight of a few more Class 08 EMUs, many sporting that bespoke Belgian livery. It's also here that the crew is rotated for the run to Liège, I'm guessing the old crew will now work back to Luxembourg. And from Gouvy it will be downhill all the way. But the line speed is now set to just 90 km per hour or 56 miles per hour, so don't expect any faster progress. The Elsam, as the name suggests, is on the banks of the Sam River, which in the town opens out to form a beautiful lake. Well, although we've changed country, the line is just as scenic. The waiting class 08 pulls out as soon as we arrive, as we are on single track in this part of the line, all the way to Ay. Oh, and Toipon, as the name suggests, seems to have three road bridges, although we only need one rail bridge in order to pass through. And that one is over the river Amblev, which now becomes our travelling companion. Well, I hope you're at least getting a useful flavour of the beauty of this line through the wet windows on this grey December afternoon. This really is a great route. I'd heartily recommend passing this way if you're on a trip through Europe. Well, I know my app isn't entirely accurate, but it does look like we're using every bit of that 90 km per hour max line speed. Well, it's only 20 past one in the afternoon and it's already starting to look pretty dull outside. But the river crossings and the views do keep coming. With yet another magical view of the river as we cross the Raymachon viaduct, the train comes into Ay. One thing you can tell is that there isn't the money to keep up rural stations in Belgium like there is in Luxembourg. At Rivage, our Line 42 joins Line 43, which is coming up from Rochefort-Jamel and Malois, stations of course that we saw on a previous journey. And we also pick up our last river of the day, the Erta.
Esno overlooks the river on two sides, and beyond the station, the line tunnels right underneath the town, and we pop out at Oni. Well, I've been on the train for over two hours, so I think it's time for a trip to the loo. Not that I'm going to be doing a loo review so much, but it is another chance to look at the interior of this Desiro unit. And now we're close to Liège, I do have a few more fellow travellers. And yes, there does appear to be only one toilet for the whole train. At Angleur, we are joined by what is the high-speed line from Cologne, and we are now very close to Liège. And with one crossing of the mighty Meuse, we roll into the iconic liege guimont station and my journey's end. Although, this unit will have a couple more stops before it terminates just a bit north of here at Liège. Bit of an ambition of mine since I started making these videos to actually come to this absolutely phenomenal station. But more about Liège on the next video. Anyway, that's it for our journey today from Luxembourg to Liège, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, then do consider subscribing to the channel and uh, give us a comment, a like, whatever you like. Uh, but yeah, in the meantime, from this stunning station at Liège, it's goodbye and thank you very much for watching. And if you'd like to see another ride between Belgium and Luxembourg, then click here to see a ride I made from Namur to Luxembourg.